in my own hometown. Stranger. Yeah. Howdy, folks. Little John. And once again, it's uh, Friday, so time for a drink and a bit of a chat for uh, our f Five on Friday segment. And this week, we're going to have a little bit of support from the uh, good folk of Glen Fittick and the 15-year-old uh, Solara Vat Scotch Whiskey. Just drink from a little bottle and a little free pack, and this is all that's left of it. And I'll keep that a little bit there. And given the brand new glasses is a run as well. They've just arrived this morning, so we'll give them a sweet. Anyway. What I want to talk about today, uh, again, just quickly as we do on a Friday, uh, is fermentation, um, specifically temperatures and you know, the process of getting from start to the, uh, to the end of the fermentation. Um, arguably the most important part of your beer. Uh, obviously ingredients are incredibly important and it makes up what's the beer and the choice of hops and yeast but fermentation is the point where you can ruin a fantastic recipe um, and where you can take an ordinary recipe and make it you know turn it into a decent beer uh, a lot of things can happen during that fermentation both good and bad depending on how you run with it and what you do. Now, most important part of fermentation is being able to control your temperature. Having your yeast working in the temperature range that you want it to and keeping that in a smaller band as you can. Now, we're just going to, for the sake of using you know, an ale yeast, and we're standard, talking fairly standard here, the range that most ale yeasts are going to work in is between about 15 degrees up to about 23, 24 degrees Celsius. Um, they will work outside those ranges, but most yeasts, that tends to be their recommended temperature range um, where you'll get results that aren't pushing into the realm of being you know, weird or producing unwanted flavours. Most yeasts will have a narrower band where they are really happy to work and it's quite often sort of that 18 to 21 degree mark. Uh, I don't like pushing, in general, a normal ale yeast beyond 21 degrees unless you're getting into things like saisons or you're particularly wanting to push you know, flavours for a wheat beer um, or even just really pushing fruits in a big, you know, in a in a big hoppy um, pale ale or an IPA. Um, so that requires a controlled environment, fridge, the temperature controller, uh, and some sort of heating implement. Um, hang on a second. All right, I'm back. Just that slight interruption, just that uh, truck roll up with a uh, load of uh, blue metal for working in the uh, in the driveway. I'm getting sick of shoveling and wheelbarrow and you know, rocks and sand and things, but it's nearly all done, so it's all good. So, anyway. As I said, you've, you want that f a, f a fridge that you can use to keep your temperature down when you need to and also by using something in there like a heat mat or a belt or a, a lamp that will warm, the, warm up the, the fridge as well and keep your, your grill at a nice, that, that nice temperature. Um, but even once you've got that temperature, you need, it's, you need to run your, your beer through a process to get the best out of it. And everyone has, there's different opinions and there's different ways of doing it depending on the exact result you're after. Um, and everyone has a different amount of time that they want to dedicate that beer in the fridge. So what I'm going to run through is just rough numbers, ballpark, 
that I look to do for most brews. Um, and I think I'm just going to go for exactly now why I do each step for that sort of time. So initially, obviously, you you, pick, you want to be pitching your yeast onto your beer at the same temperature the yeast is. So I tend to try to get my wort and my yeast at the same ambient temperature. Um, so that will be anywhere from 18 to 23 degrees, depending on the time of the year here here in the garage. So. Um, you want that, you, ideally you want your yeast within, you know, 5-6 degrees um, of your wort temperature going in. You don't want too much difference. You, do, you start getting some shock and it, you know, it, and it can kill yeast cells. Um, and again, that's a topic of um, contention with some people. But I've read it, I've seen studies where, you know, outside of that sort of 6 degree range, the difference you start do you start getting a lot of loss of cells, and given what well, we've done, it's put a lot, of, a lot of effort to make sure we've got enough cells going in. So pitching around the same around the same temperature into your fridge, get your fridge set to the temperature you want to ferment at, so you get your wort to that temperature as quickly as you can. Um, so we're going to say, okay, we've got this work on. We're doing a, a nice uh, pale ale. We're using a USO five. Um, we want to sit. The temperature between 18 and 20 degrees. Uh, again, depending on what you want. More to the 20 if you want to really push the fruits from the yeast. But if you want to let the hops do their thing and let them really stand up and be the be the star of the beer, then keep your temperature down that 18 degree range. I, you'll, even, you'll, you'll see me quite often doing pale ales down at 15 and 16 degrees um, to to take the yeast out of the equation and take the flavours from the yeast out and just let the beer shine. Um, and again, that's a difference. That's a whole different subject. Right. So we've got our beer at our, at our selected ferment temp, temp. We want to let that run for about a week. Yeah, seven days, um, ideally, to allow the fermentation to go through and do its thing to get through your lag phase. Have a couple of days to ferment. And generally, most yeast, when pitching the right numbers, at seven days, have done. The job they've finished fermenting they've done pretty much everything they're going to do but there's still a lot of you know unwanted flavors and compounds that are still in your wort that have been produced during the fermentation that need time to dissipate or for the yeast to re-eat and take up and get them out of your out of your wort so you don't have them flowing over into your finished beer okay so at that point you've got really two options you can just let the beer run as it is and, gi and just give it time, or you can raise the temperature a few degrees. Now it's referred to as a de-rest, a diacetyl rest, um, and it's most commonly seen referred to when using lager yeast at lower temps. So we're not not going to go into that right right now. Um, but with any yeast, raising the temp just a couple of degrees gives the yeast a little bit more oomph and lets it worked out a little bit harder to clean up those last little bits and to tidy off the last ends. Um, and I often find that between that finished ferment where you're actually getting a stable gravity to a week later where you, when you've done that um, a de-rest or a raise in temperature or even just letting it sit the same temperature you'll drop a d one or two points in, in gravity over that, over that time. Uh, and that can make a big difference to your finished beer to the, how clean it is and how smooth it is. So I run another week, seven days at the higher temperature. Uh, now again, as I'm, I do, I do most of my brewing on the weekends, um, and now Friday is, is my, generally is my brew day. If it's not Friday, it's the Sunday. So things tend to happen in week blocks, and it's nice and easy to remember because it's okay. What I did this week, what, as opposed to I did it on Monday and I've got to do Thursday and I've got to do Saturday and I've got to do Wednesday. Just do it in weeks of the go. It's simple, and it works for me. Yeah, you know, everyone's needs it will be a little bit different. Again, as I said, depending on the time frame. So I like to let it sit for a week at the high temperature or just at the normal temperature to finish off and clean up. End of that week, I go into a cold crash, uh, and cold crashing is just simply dropping your temperature to allow all the yeast and the proteins that are suspended in your wort or in now in your beer to drop out and settle on the bottom into your yeast cake so you can bottle a nice clear yeah, clear finished beer. Now, cold crash 
confuses some people because they they go, okay, well, I've, got to, I've got to crash it. It's got to be instant. It's got to be as fast as I can. I've got to get it from 18 degrees or what is now, you know, 20 or 21 because you're resting down to as cold as I can get it. And they they'll crank turn the fridge down to you know to one degree or zero instantly and let that beer crash overnight. And that leads to a couple of problems. One, your fridge is working like a bastard trying to get trying to get cold. Because um, it's not getting there. You're taking the temperature of your wart. Even if your fridge is sitting on minus three or minus four degrees, it's going to take time for that body of wart to get down to that naught one, even two degrees that you've got it set up for your crash. It's going to kill your fridge real quick. Your fridges aren't designed to run for 24 or 36 hours constantly. They've got to switch, switch in and out, let the motor cool, let the compressor cool down, let the, you know, let the fluids and the hot, you know, all settle down. Um, so I find it's worse to just drop, you know, by, you know, six or seven degrees a day, and and just drop it down. So I'll go, I'll go from 21 down to 14, 14 down to down to eight, eight down to four, then four down to you know, down to one, you know, that final mark. Yeah, you know, narrowing that band a little bit. No, so I'll do that over four days. That allows me two or three days at that final temperature for everything to drop out. At that point when you've reached your final temperature, if you're gonna add findings, that's the time to do it. I mean you can add it back here further, but I prefer to do it there when I've got a cold to drop the findings in then. Um, and again, that's, that's that's not a hard and fast thing. And I've never done a study to actually check it out. So, it, really, any time in that process, you can add your findings. But I don't want them in there for any any longer than I need to. So, once it's cold, drop it out. If you're going with findings, if not, that cold crush was going to do a good job of clearing your beer. So then you're there for two days. You're there for two or three days. You bottle it up. You bottle it cold. Don't let it come back up to the temperature. You know, because you're just defeating the purpose of doing what you're doing. You're going to wake the wheat yeast cake back up and whatnot. Bottle it cold and get your, you know, get your, get your boot beers away. Get them back in the cupboard so they can come back up to ambient temperature to carb up. Or get your beer in the keg and get it in the fridge and get on the gas so you're drinking it, you know, two to 14 days later, depending on how you want to, you know, 20 minutes later if you want to, if you want to force carb it. Right. But that's your process. Block of time at ferment temperature a raised temp to clean up and then a lowering of the temp to bring it down to you know, as low as you can, as close to zero as you can get it. You don't want to freeze the beer and again that's why you don't do that, big, that cold crash it's bodgy because it, you can get to the point where you will freeze the beer. If you bring it down bit by bit you, you're reducing the chances of that happening. If it does happen just let the beer settle back to normal, just bring the temp up a little bit, let it, let it thaw out and, and move on. It'll all, it'll all reintegrate. Um, without without any problem. So that's it. Simple 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 process. Fine tune it to how you want to do it and to fit in with your with your process. But I strongly recommend that your your main body of fermentation is for seven days and that your whole beer is not bottled within fourteen. Fourteen days will allow you to get the process all done, let that beer finish up nicely, and you'll get a bit of better beer for it. And as I said before, that's what we need. We're here for we're here for better beer. Yeah. If you want cheap, quick, nasty beer, you work it in that seven day in that seven days. Told you. Let's work for good beer. Give it give it time to do what it needs everything to do what it needs to do. Bottle it up. And you'll enjoy a far better beer down the track for doing it. Okay, so as always, if you've got any questions, stick them down the bottom, any comments, put them there. Yeah, I, I answer any questions, I'll, I'll, I'll respond to comments. If you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button down there so you'll know every time there's a new video on, so you don't miss anything. And, uh, if you don't miss them, there's plenty of stuff going on, there's always something interesting to learn. So, that's, that's Little John for today. Fermentation, five on Friday. So until I see you again, we're talking beer, we're drinking beer. We make them be good brewing.